Decisions, decisions. Hello, every vato. It's Beast Jose. And today I was thinking, Jose, you have battled many times with video games. You are the master of battling battles. And also, you are a great fork. So I got to thinking, Jose, which ones are the best battle games in history? Which ones are the best battle games you've ever played, Jose? So because top 10 lists are like the most awesome and original idea on the planet, I decided to use my gargantuan brain to list the absolute best of the best in order from slightly awesome to cosmic pineapple of godhood. Well, up until the second placer at least, nothing is more cosmically pineapple than me, of course. <laughs> so here they are, the top 10 games with the word battle in their title. So no battlefield, eh? Because those games suck. And you should be ashamed that you even thought they'd be on my list. Anyhow, are you ready for the list? Here it is. I hope you remember to take your comet in. Woohoo. See. Okay, so I like fighting games. I like them so much I even reviewed one once. Best fighting game ever. So back in the 90s, this kind of game became so popular, every game company had to make one to be cool. It was like part of their contract or something. So that means a lot of chitty fighting games ended up making their way to consoles. Tough enough, Shaq Fu, Paws the Fist of Fury, Pit Fighter. So you probably think I'm gonna say Battle Blaze. Close. That one is shitty. But how about the least shitty of all the shitty fighting games out there? Ranma 1 half Hard Battle. Yeah, let's go with that one. I liked it because when it came out, I watched the cartoon and that's like the biggest thing this game had going for it. You could play as your favorite characters from the show. Only problem is, for us folks here in America... If you didn't already know this show existed, this game pretty much was just another chitty fighting game. Not that the box art even looked like the cartoon. Worse than that, you only had three buttons for everything. You press A to jump, that's weird for a fighting game, B for strong attacks, and Y for weak ones. Also, it was a slow as hell fighting game. The voice acting sucked, because it wasn't done by the guys who did the show. The music stood out, those tunes are actually kinda nice, but ultimately, the main reason to play this is to see the stories they came up with for every character, and then go pawn it and go get the show on VHS and watch that instead. I liked it, but you probably won't. Getting better. Numero nueve. Okay, so did I mention I like fighting games? So back when the Sony PlayStation 1 first came out, I was like, holy shit, graphics in 3D, SA! But I didn't know back then what I know today. That polygons suck ass and they're blocky and stupid. Besides, I played mostly 2D games anyway. But not back in the day. Back when Battle Arena Toshin then first came out, we were like, This shit is awesome! Look at that old fart riding the ball! That's dope, Essie! And of course, in arcades during this time, we already had Tekken 2 and we were anxiously awaiting its release on home consoles. So in the meantime, this was what we played at home. No one today even remembers these ridiculous characters. Rongo? Bitch please, who remembers you? And the jewel case art for the American version is forgettably terrible. I mostly played it at Toys R Us on their display model. But this was the game they always loved to show off at the stores, so for some odd reason, I ended up playing it. It was miles better than number 10, though. <laughs> better game than before. Better. This is number 8. I really, really love fighting games, especially the King of Fighters series, but I really couldn't decide here, so it's a tie between KOF 99 Millennium Battle and KOF 2002 Challenge to Ultimate Battle. Even though neither of these is my favorite KOF game, in fact, these two are among the worst in the series, especially you, King of Fighters 99. You replace Kim Kafwan with John Hoon? What the hell is wrong with you? 
Oh, and don't get me started on that ridiculous striker system. That's got to be like the worst idea ever introduced into KOF. Yeah, you go right on ahead. I'll show up three times and help you, win, and then you can die. Because, you know, that's what a teammate does, right? 2002's entry was a little bit of an improvement. The roster was decent. The intro, well, it's the same old, same old. Hey, here's everyone you know and love. Plus these new dudes. Morning, Kyo. Morning, Iori. Have a good day. Anyhow, for me, the series would never be as good as in 1997. But these two have battled in the title, so there. It is time for the numero siete. It is time for the numero siete. The number seven. Oh, the King of Fighters series. How I love you. All right, so no more fighting games. Here's the next entry. Mega Man Battle Network. And the battle games are just getting better, aren't they? Who doesn't know Mega Man? Probably someone who doesn't play video games, that's for sure. A lot of us grew up loving this series of games, which was always traditionally a side-scrolling shoot-em-up game. So to cater to the RPG-loving audience, they made it an RPG. Mega Man Battle Network spawned six games, all on the GBA. Except for five, which also was put out on the DS. But anyhow, in this alternate Mega Man world, you are Lan. Some kid who trains and fights robots in a virtual world. Basically, Capcom said, hey, look at Pokemon. That game is successful. Maybe if we take Mega Man and Pokemonize it. Eh? Eh? And so this game was born. As well as a cartoon that three people watched. Woohoo! Six! Number six! Yay! I like gun games. I can't really wax nostalgic about them. I sucked at them. I played Duck Hunt for like two minutes before I got bored with it, and then I never touched it again. And as for Wild Gunman, we didn't even buy the thing. I think the only reason people know it exists is because of Back to the Future 2. Can you have to use your hands? That's like a baby's toy. Anyhow, in the early 90s, the SNES kicked off with a BANG! And the Super Scope 6 would suffer the same fate as the NES light gun. That is, not enough games. Battle Clash was the one game that really kept it from being a total waste of money. It was fun, I got to play it all the time at my friend's house, and I still sucked at it. Here's footage of someone who could actually beat it. Wait, not that guy, this guy! Wow, what a jip of an ending. Next! It's time for the number five. Five. Chess tends to be considered a game for brainy people, so naturally, I wanted to be good at it too. But how do you play one player chess and not get bored? Most chess games make the game look dull and boring. It's like they want you to not like it until some brilliant guy said, hey, let's spice it up and feature animations of chess pieces beating the fuck out of each other. And that's the reason we have chess champions today, because this game gave kids a reason to love chess. And for that reason alone, and for having the balls to make something cool out of something considered naturally nerdy, this game gets high honors from me. Entry number four is endorsed by Hell and Satan himself. Here it is. This game gets a burrito of approval. It's an awesome, very little love bargain bin game from the PS1's dying days. The only reason it isn't higher on the list is because it doesn't feel like a complete game. It's a little difficult to explain the game, let me try. It's a combination RPG board game with customizable characters where movement and actions taken on a grid is decided by a hand of cards that you're dealt completely at random. Your custom character was able to level up and choose which abilities to focus on until level 15, that was the max level. Meaning you could never max out any of the stats. You had to pretty much choose one ability to excel in as a middle of the road guy always gets crushed in the game. Missions in this very bare-bones story mode were one per level up, then you were done. The game was made for multiple players, obviously. If it had received the popularity it deserved, 
Perhaps we could have gotten a more complete sequel with more to do and more options available and a, maybe a better leveling system or something. Sadly, this one is a very underappreciated and underplayed game that I feel deserved an audience. It was a great concept for a game that came at a time when the PS1 was closing shop up for good. Check it out if you haven't, 80's memory alone is a good enough reason to get it. Just listen to this chick. This melody rocks you into the next world, I say. Also into number three. <coughs> today, Broder Bun software is extinct. Much like the sour cream I put on my burrito today. But back in the day, they were known for their educational titles, like Ancient Art of War, they published Oregon Trail. They're even known for Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? The answer is right here in my house. That's always been the answer. Ah, but on the NES, they were known for the Battle of Olympus. Battle of Olympus was a fun little action RPG side-scroller game that managed to consistently stay at the top 10 Nintendo power list for months on end. Today, few people really know about this little game that could, but those who do are aware of its treacherous learning curve, and we all lovingly call it Nintendo Hard. Beating it was like achieving Nirvana. If Ninja Gaiden was too easy for you, you would turn to Battle of Olympus and say, PLEASE GIVE IT TO ME BABY! And if Disney writers had played it, they'd have a slightly better grasp on Greek mythology. Slightly. TWO! IT'S NUMBER TWO! Returning to the NES for awesome battle game goodness, we have the greatest game to ever use the word battle ever published for the NES. Battletoads. Take what I said about Battle of Olympus's difficulty curve and multiply it by a hundred. If beating Battle of Olympus was achieving Nirvana, then beating Battletoads was like fucking a hundred clones of the goddess Aphrodite while climbing Mount Olympus and then exploding from Nirvana overload and being reborn on Olympus for the express purpose of continuing the Aphrodite sex orgy in an infinite loop of orgasms. What I'm saying is that this game was hard, and it made your dick hard. Especially if you manage to beat it in two-player mode, which inexplicably makes the game harder! We all know the legendary fun this game produces. I think further explanation is unnecessary. This game was badass. We're finally here. Our number one best game with the word battle in its title is an honor I give to Ogre Battle, now one of the hardest games to find for sale on ChargeToMuch.com, or anywhere for that matter. Be it the PSX version, the N64 version, or the SNES version, you can never go wrong with this series if you are a strategy RPG fan. Customizable armies, customizable hero, fun little story about reuniting a warring kingdom. This game has everything an old-timey RPG fan can ever hope for. All for the modest price of fuck you, this game is not worth 350 bucks! Damn it, how much is that in pesos? I think if I just saw off my leg, I can probably. Anyhow, that's it for today, Everybato. For now, I have stuff to do in the garage. I'll see you later! He's pussy, 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 he's pussy.